Uh, we're shifting topics. It's interesting that uh, the thing that got me interested in uh, oxy oxytocin was the fact that iodine had, or oxytocin had the ability to kill the pain of fibromyalgia. In this particular case, we have found something else that's very interesting that is helpful. Uh, iodine was first discovered back in 1811 uh, during the years Napoleon was in power. The use of iodine for treatment of goiter was the first time that a single item, iodine, was used for the treatment of a specific illness, goiter. Now, you will find many doctors in today's world that think that giving iodine is causing goiter. And this is part of the schizophrenia of medicine in the sense that we used iodine to start with to get rid of goiters. Today, you have doctors who think that giving iodine gives a goiter. You know, this is the schizophrenia of medicine. And a part of it is the lack of, of uh, you know, uh, interest in history. Now, let's look at goiter. Uh, up in the northeast area quadrant of the United States, uh, we had a lot of goiter around the Great Lakes region. And the people who have goiters have a higher incidence of thyroid cancer, breast cancer, stomach cancer, esophageal cancer, ovarian cancer, and endometrial cancer. Number one, if you give iodine to the human body, to the thyroid, you make thyroid hormone. Can you name number two tissue that has the ability to make thyroid hormone? No? Ovary. The ovarian follicle has the ability to make thyroid hormone just like the thyroid does. And all these tissues have the ability to concentrate iodine. And here is the key statement. The absence of iodine in the human body is a promoter of cancer. When you don't have iodine in the thyroid, you get goiter, and that turn will eventually head you towards cancer. If you have the absence of iodine in the breast, before you get to breast cancer, what's the intermediary disease? Greater than 60% of all the women in this room have got the problem. What is it? Fibrocystic breast disease. And in fact, that was shown in the New England Journal of Medicine about two or three years ago, that fibrocystic breast disease is a precursor for developing breast cancer later on in life. In the newborn, in a fetus that's developing, the first place you will see iodine accumulating is in the stomach, long before there is iodine in the, uh, before there's such a thing as a thyroid tissue. Lack of iodine in the stomach, what disease are you going to get? What pushes you towards development of stomach cancer? A, chlorohydria. The lack of iodine in the stomach will give you problems with no acid production. Esophageal cancer, ovarian cancer, if, now notice, in the thyroid, you have thyroid goiter, cyst, nodule, scar tissue, enlargement, and we call it a goiter. In the breast, cyst, nodule, scar tissue, enlargement, pain, and we call it what? Fibrocystic breast disease. In the ovary, cyst, nodule, scar tissue, enlargement, pain, and we call it PCOS, polycystic ovaries, all right? And women with PCOS, what happens to them by the time they're in their late 40s, early 50s? This is a board question, guys. Women with PCOS have a higher incidence of ovarian cancer. So that women with PCOS, by the time they're into their late 40s, early 50s, we recommend that they have their ovaries removed because of the high incidence of ovarian cancer in that particular group. Lack of iodine to the uh, endometrium, what are you going to get? You said it over here. Endometriosis. And then endometriosis leads on, and eventually they get endometrial cancer. 
In the 1990s, goiters were very prevalent in, in large numbers around the Great Lakes region. 40% of uh, school-aged children had goiter. By 1924, in Akron, Ohio, 56% of the population had goiter with a ratio of six women to one man. Before girls develop puberty, at the ratio of goiter uh, is one to one in children. But once the girls go through puberty, the ratio is six to one, six women to one man with goiter. What's the ratio of hypothyroidism in men versus women? Good board question. 15 to one. Why is it that women have so much problem with thyroid disease and men don't? It's the estrogen. Estrogen inhibits the ability of the body to absorb iodine. That was published about four years ago. Notice the problem was discovered back in 1924. It took us until four years ago to figure out what was happening. Estrogen inhibits the absorption of iodine. Now, in 1928, uh, we started adding iodine to the salt, and within a few years, the goiter problem in the Northeast was pretty much resolved. Now, many of you will go home and say, hey, you know, we just need to give more iodine. Your fellow colleagues are going to sit there and say, uh, we have plenty of iodine in the salt of the United States. Why do we need to go and add more? What's the flaw in that statement? 50% of women do not cook with iodized salt. Okay? 50% do not cook with iodized salt. Number two, all of you are taking care of this aging population. Now, we took the iodine out of the bread. We took the iodine out of the milk. And where's the only iodine source that the population has? It's in the salt. But what are all of you being told as you get older? Your blood pressure is going up and you've got to be, you know, limit the amount of salt that you're taking in. In fact, you'll see it in the journals that we've got this, you know, public health issue that we're trying to decrease the amount of salt intake in the population by greater than 50 percent over the next 10 years. Now, folks, if you look at the population 60 years old and above, what percentage of people who become senile have hypothyroidism? It's about 25%. About a quarter of the population age 60 and above have hypothyroidism. What do you think is going to happen as we limit the salt intake of our older population? 